Hello everyone, Rakarkarts here. This here is an 8 by 12 inch photograph, black and white, that I took driving in a 1960s VW down the hill at Santa Fe Drive towards the Self-Realization Fellowship in Encinitas, California. So, quotes, because I wasn't really driving here. Well, I was, but not in a VW. Um, so I shot this VW bus uh, from inside when it was parked in Hermosa Beach when I was taking part in an art festival. Um, <clears throat> and I thought it would be nice because I was just parked there and it was just in a parking lot, really. I thought it would be nice to replace that with places that I like to visit. And this is one of them. So I have a few others, but this is the one that I call Cruisin'. And then the zip code of this place. Let's see. There we go again. Cruising 92024. So I'm gonna color this with Marshall Photo Oils. I've done another one that I used watercolors, but today we're doing Marshall Photo Oils again. So let's do it. These are the colors I'm going to use. Oxide green, sepia, which is a light brown, flash, lovely color name, sky blue, and yellow. If I need more colors, I have a whole box full with these Marshall Photo Oils here, but I think I can get away with using these. We also need cotton rounds for the bigger surfaces, maybe the interior of the bus, using the smooth side. Cotton swab, Q-tip, very pointy ones, these are called eye tees or nail tees. Gloves, because oils are slightly toxic, so I want to wear gloves. Some palette or palette paper to put your paints on. A photograph, of course. And then, like, sturdy background, I have like a cardboard uh, in the back here. So, let's get started. Let's put on the gloves. All right. Let's move that over a little bit. Okay, as many of you know by now, I like to start with the bigger surfaces. So I'm going to do the interior of the bus with sky blue. You don't need very much. You see, it's like a tad of paint. These paints last for very long times. I probably have this tube, which is the six inch version. Was it four inch? Yeah, it's probably four inch. Um, like for years, and then other sizes are like the two inch versions. Okay, let's grab this cotton round. And then with the smooth side, we're going to pick up, we're going to pick up some of that paint. And then Put it where you want. Very light pressure. Not pushing hard at all. So this is, this paper is um, Fuji Crystal Archive paper, Luster. So luster or matte version of that paper works best. So these are actually papers that are used with a light chat. So these are like little dark rooms and machines. And this takes up, this take, no, it actually doesn't take it up. The paint is on top of it. The, the, it works really well with Marshall Photo Oils because it doesn't like suck into the paper and you can easily remove it, and that's how I like to work. So roughly I put it on, and then I remove the paint where I don't want it. For example, this looks like, like silver. Let's just go over it, and then we'll remove it later. So I have another one that I did from the same VW, 
but at a different place. I was actually driving into Cardiff by the sea, California from Solana Beach. Uh, but I did that one with watercolors. So you, you can check that out too. But in this case here today, I would like to use uh, Marshall photo oils again. There we go. The original color of the bus was yellow, I believe, on the inside. I just like this blue a lot. Maybe next time I'll do a yellow or maybe even some other color. It's also the nice thing about this hand tinting or hand coloring is that you, you can color it however you like. We can see here the speedometer. Of course, when this bus was parked, it was at zero. So I photoshopped it at about 25. So even digitally, I'm going to correct speed here. At least I believe it's 25 here. I think that's it. Or well, maybe out here. Yeah, that's it for the blues. So I'm gonna leave the sky gray. I liked how these clouds are here. It's probably a marine layer. But I do want to color the ocean. So let's first clean up now where we went over the lines. I'm doing that with a Q-tip and you can see it picks up the color. Again, here, this was also a silvery looking part. Let's remove it from this too. Here, on the visor. And then here, in the sky. That part I said I would remove. Okay, let's take a clean new one. Make my fingers not looking so cold anymore. Actually, later I'll add that flesh color. I think I'm pretty much done, but maybe later we'll find a spot. Uh, oh, like here. This is also a photo that's going into my new book of Encinitas, Met My Hand Colored Images. Well, that is second edition of my coffee table, coffee table book with my Encinitas images. The first edition sold out. And I'm getting pretty close to finishing the second edition. Just need to find an editor, some proofreaders. 
So in that second book, I also have a chapter in it on do-it-yourself hand coloring. It's actually one of the toys that I did before, which I also put in the book. Actually, there's, there's, there's two tutorials, one with Marshall Photo Oils and one with um, Pastels. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Let's go to another color now. Let's take Oxide Green. So I'll start with the bushes over here and here, and then do some of the grass here. Maybe these plants here too. So let's do that with a Q-tip. Again, you don't need to push very hard. Wiping this green on. Some bushes in the background there too. So I'm a little careful now here, clo getting close to the edge here with the reg region that I have already colored. Now I don't want to go over the lines. Because then I have to fix up that mess. Palm trees I have to think about a little. If I want to do those, they're so small. At least in the back here, we can do these trees. Of these bushes here. Okay, I'm gonna do something different with these in the foreground. So let's still add some green to this bush. I think it's a palm tree. Some of these trees in the back. And then the grass. I have a hard time distinguishing what this is here. I think these are also plants. Let's just make this all green. Take a clean cotton round and 
dab this a little bit, which makes it a, a little bit more uniform. It's a little bit uneven. And in, in, in terms of how saturated the color is. Maybe in the back here. Tone it down a little. So I'm kind of actually removing some of the paint now. Okay, so now back to these bushes here. What I would like to do, I'd like to, since it's paint, we can mix this. I, I want to add a little bit of sepia to it. And we'll do that with a new clean cotton round. So pick up a little bit. Well, that might be too much, we'll see and mix that into the green. This this desaturates this green. A little more. There we go. So I have a nice desaturated darker green now. I'll add that to these bushes. I think we could still add a little more. It's not a big difference cause, because what happens is it's actually the, the photo, the grays of the photo that desaturate your colors. So if you want a very bright blue, you want to have a very light background, which we do for the VW here. And since this is already some grays behind here, it already automatically like desaturates our greens, but there's still a difference. And it's actually nice to have these subtle differences when you look at a, at a photo, a hand-colored photo. All right, and the other thing, to mix it up a little, take some yellow. Don't know why I have such a big tube of yellow. I don't use it as nearly as much as this sky blue here. It might have been that that was just what was available. Anyway, let's take the other side of this Q-tip, pick up some yellow. And we'll add that like here and there. Maybe then these bushes here. Again, it changes up the colors a bit. And then take a clean cotton round. This, of course, it's not clean, but we'll use the clean side. And then dab that a little bit. There we go. All right. So we still have some of that sepia. Clean new Q-tip, pick up some of that color, and we'll add that to the fence. Even this cotton swab is now a little bit too big for this part here. here it still works nicely. So 
So let's do that part with one of these ITs. So I'm up for the challenge, so let's add some green to these palm trees in the bag. And of course, we'll do that with the ITs. So what I would like to do for that is let's take some of that yellow and mix it in with that green we worked with previously. And get a slightly different green again. Well, and since I'm nearsighted, I actually have to take my glasses off so I can see this up close. I put my macro lens on my camera. It's only maybe less than 10 inches away from the photo now. But I would like to show this really up close. There we go. Actually, I think sometimes it's actually these little details that make this kind of work very exciting. So if you have like clients who buy your work or even if it's a gift for somebody, you, know, you might want to point this out because it may go unnoticed. Or people like subconsciously see this and appreciate this kind of work. And of course now for, of sh for sure I don't want to do the sky anymore because that would get rid of all this detail I'm adding. Of course, this would be a lot easier if the photo was printed at six by four feet. Okay, I think that's it. I think we did it. Since we're zoomed in in the back here now, let's add some background aqua to the ocean. And again, I don't need much at all for this, so just just a little tad here. And that I think we can do with regular Q-tip. Carefully going around the palm, tree, palm trees I did earlier. There. Okay. 
And then we'll take clean cotton round and then dab that a little bit. Be careful with the palm trees and really just going straight up and down, pushing, turning a little bit. Like that. There's a tiny bit of ocean there too. And right here. And I think that's it. Dab that a little bit again. And since we're still all zoomed in, with my and my macro lens is on, let's pick up some of that yellow with the IT and add that to this tulip which is part of the building. So we could add like a gold, like when I did the, um, the watercolor one. Oh wait, no, that's another one. So actually I also did a watercolor piece with the, the wide view of the self-realization fellowship. And then I used like an iridescent watercolor for the tulips here of the building. So Marshall Photo Oils does have also like a gold, but that's acrylic. And you need to thin that before you can use it to make it transparent. I haven't done a video on that, on the use of that Marshall a photo acrylic, I guess I should call it. So I might do that in the future too. Uh, let's see, did I, all the, did I do them all? There's actually another tulip to the right here and another one to the left, but they're not in the image. So for now, we'll just stick to this one. I haven't mentioned this color in the beginning, but this is burnt sienna. It just came to me, I would like to add a very subtle color of that to the street here. I don't want to keep it gray. So just take another Q-tip. We're going to add some of that burnt sienna to the street. Like I feel the image was lacking like some warmer colors. I mean, I'm going to do my hand later, but that's, that's not very much. It's not a big part of the photo. It was just missing. It was too cool overall. Like even the greens, I think I consider it like a cool color. I think if I would have done the, the Volkswagen interior yellow, it would have been different. I, I probably wouldn't have needed to color the, the asphalt. Yeah. I think that, that helps. I like the image a lot better already now. Of course, it's whatever what you want to do too. If you're happy with a nice, cool overall image, it's totally fine. Another clean cotton round and tone this down a little. So I'm kind of wiping off now a little bit of that burnt sienna. And 
still a little bit more on the back here than towards the front. There we go. And one more thing. I would like to also remove the paint from the white stripes on the road. And I'm doing that with a clean Q-tip. And then let's take a pointy one. There we go. And this part. Actually, that's a yellow line. So actually, we could add yellow to that. These others are white, and there's this crosswalk here. A little bit got on the car. All right, yeah, let's do that. Just using the same one, picking up some yellow, add that. To the center line. There. Looking pretty good. And now, let's focus on my hand and guess what color we're going to use for that. Flash. It's really like a, like a warm brown and actually I've, I've used it for other things too than skin color. With a Q-tip. All right, clean cotton round, get, get rid of some of those brush strokes, tone it down a little. And then I'm taking another pointy one and remove the color from my ring. There we go. And I think that's all the colors I said I was going to use. Let's take the other side of this IT, which has some kind of cotton swab on it too. And I'll just add some of that brown to my sweater. thing I would like to add some blue to my pants because so I'm taking a cube so I'm taking a new cotton swab 
and put it on a little thicker so it still looks different from from the rest of the interior of the bus And then maybe this part too. Turn it down a little. Clean cotton round. Give it a brush strokes. And that's still not quite happy. So there's one more thing I would like to do, and that's taking some orange. Oh, this one's not orange. This is orange. Like I said, I'd like to add still a little bit more warmer tones to it. So I'm going with that orange, and I'm adding that here and there in the vegetation. I believe some of these bushes were actually very like red or almost purple looking. But for now this orange will do. And then smooth it out a little bit. And that's it. Now it's done. And here's the finished piece. 8 by 12 inch photo. Printed with a light jet on um, Fuji Crystal Archive photo paper. Ma uh, luster. Matte will work too. Um, color with Marshall photo oils. So I hope you liked the video. Please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time.